This week on Machinery PTV, we wrap up the Polk Auction Collector Sale, featuring some beautiful classic green machines. Through Precision Ag Technology, dealerships troubleshoot for their customers. And this classic John Deere A just spends time showing off. Your machinery is a serious investment and at the heart of every farming operation. Some call it a passion. We're Machinery Peak TV, and today we'll cover everything from auction roundups to the classics to the latest trends and technology. Machinery Peak, the most trusted name in farm equipment. Machinery Peak thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. Hey folks, welcome to Machine Repeat TV. You know, on Twitter this week, I was asked a question. The guy said, Pete, if you were on a 100 mile tractor ride and you had to pick one tractor to ride, what would it be? Now I try to be impartial, but at the top of my list would be a John Deere 6030. And we're gonna watch this beautiful restored one sell today. But before we do, let's catch up on the latest farm equipment news. All right, thanks, Pete. I'm Clinton Griffiths. Like so many other corners of the economy, the tractor sales department reporting slowing numbers in March. According to the Association of Equipment Manufacturers, monthly flash report sales of all tractors in the U.S. fell 16 percent in the month of March compared to March a year ago. So far for the year, more than 41,000 tractors have been sold, down 8 percent from the first three months of last year. And two-wheel drive smaller tractors, they're down 9 percent, 42 under 100 horsepower, they're down 6%. Four-wheel drive tractors were down 7%, while sales of combines for the year were off 18%. We now know a little bit more about the plan to help farmers and ranchers through the COVID-19 crisis. The $19 billion in immediate relief includes $9.6 billion for the livestock industry, which includes $5.1 billion for cattle, $2.9 billion for dairy, and one6 for hogs. $3.9 billion comes in for row crop producers, while $2.1 billion for specialty crops and $500 million for other crops. USDA Secretary Sonny Perdue is pushing to get those direct payments out next month. But is it enough? I talked to Farm Journal Washington correspondent Jim Wiesmeyer about the plan. If he's going to have sign up relatively soon, and if Purdue, by he I mean Secretary Purdue, and if he wants the checks to be, or the funding out there, to be by the end of uh, May, if not early June, we're going to have to uh, you know, have those details. The problem, and I totally understand it, I'm not all anti-USDA on this one, they have to write the rules on this one, and that's really what they're doing right now. Now on top of the targeted programs, USDA will use other available funding to buy and distribute food to food banks. That's it for news. Now let's look at some recent auction prices from around the country. Folks, I'm here with Dennis Polk, and Dennis, you have to tell us, this is kind of a special 3020 here. Uh, it, it really is. Uh, Jeff, when he was a senior, there was a farm sale down by Huntington, and I remember going down and looking at this thing, and it was just unbelievable original. And it's, you know, you, 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 to find original is so tough. You can paint them, you can paint the biggest clunker in the world, and they all look the same, man. But this is the late 70s, right? Yeah, late, late okay. 70s, or, or, I mean, early 70s, me, early 70s. 70s. Right. Uh, so I sent Jeff down and he got it bought, brought it back. And we had it for, I don't know, two, three years. And then I sold yep. it to a collector uh, down in Illinois. And I always kind of regretted selling it. And Jeff kept talking about it. 
And then we got a call a few years ago uh, from Zach Heiner. Our old friend Zach. Yeah, old friend Zach. And he asked Jeff, he said, where did that go? He said, that was my dad's tractor. We'd bought on his farm sale, not realizing all that. Sure. And he said, I really want to buy that back. And Jeff says, well, dad's going down next week. It, we didn't know that at the time. And I ended up, I ended up got it bought back. And then Zach's been hammering around. And finally I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to get rid of everything. And so Zach's going to have an opportunity. And I hope he gets it. I really do, because it, it's where it should go is back the family. But it's just, it's about as nice original tractor as, as I've just ever had. And that the original factor, as much you talk about that, Dennis, as a, as a collector, you know, you see all kinds of restorations. Oh, yeah. Uh, but like you say. They're only original one time. And I mean, really original. And to find something that's really nice original, it's so, so hard to find today. I mean, when you think about the, how old it is, uh, and I love original if you can find that super clean and we've seen it happen you know really in the last 15 years uh, a really pristine original piece will bring as much or more than a restored and really it should well more classic iron here for you folks Denny tell us about your 4620 believe it or not come off of farm sale about 10 miles north of here. You didn't have I, to travel I think it's the far. only one. I think it's the only one that we don't travel a long, long ways for, other than the old B. But um, it had an old cab on it. But the tin work, once again, we was talking about that originality. I mean, this is original paint. And so we put new, I love, I like the big rubber too. I think it's just a stud tractor, but you know, it's a standard. And I, I don't know whether the production number is probably a little, quite a bit lower, I would imagine, than the other, but it's just a really nice, straight, original tractor. So. And the, the 40, uh, 620 versus like a 4020, how over the years as you've watched that and sold them, how would you talk about the difference between those two? The 4020's always out, always been a strong seller, but you know, even back when we were selling 7700 combines, the 3300, Proportionally, you can, the bigger you buy, the better the buy, over and over again, you know. Uh, now, I think I finally begin to see the trend change in the S-Series combines. Mm. But, you know, a 3300, you'd, a guy come in, he a 33 or 4400, and you didn't have one, you'd try to talk him into a 6600. Oh, I don't want anything that big. Of course, you know, today you, you throw a 3300, get a John Deere 40, and then get a 3300, and then go to a, an s 790 and I mean it's just incredible well and again here you look at a tractor like this that this was the this was the big boy of the day yeah I mean 150 175 horse now as you've been because you're kind of always looking Dennis I think and I know you enjoy the hunt for oh, tractors. Absolutely. what's been your your process I mean do you Roger, now this one came from close. Are you digging through papers? Are people calling you? Are you on the internet? How do you find these tractors? Yes. <laughs> 13 to 15. Last and final call. So online, $13,000. Here are a few more items that sold on today's sale. Get more from your seed bag by doing more with your seed bed. Learn how at caseih.com slash seedbed. Your next piece of equipment is on machinerypeat.com. 
Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineRepeat.com. As farmers gear up for the hustle of harvest, machines are getting prepped. But for Ben Clay, harvest can create hiccups. We're tilling corn ground with John Deere 2720 rippers. We had uh, two nines set up the same, weighted the same, same horsepower, same implement, same depth, same field. One tractor was just totally outperforming the other. It was the fall of 2017 when Clay knew something wasn't right. Couldn't figure out why the fuel filters were fine. He said the inefficiency issue wasn't setting off any alarms, but visibly showing up as the equipment was fast at work. Honestly, just watching them working out in the field. Really? Just in the, one of the operators said, I don't know what's going on, but he's lagging behind. Something must be wrong with his tractor. That phone call was to Rudy Rotz, the precision ag manager at the local dealership. Combining was going on, fall tillage was just getting started. A call that revealed the problem in the field. A customer had called with two identical machines with identical implements that weren't operating with the same efficiency. He was able to go on and go online and look at the tractor's performance and found out that one of them was having a lot more slippage than the other. An issue that Rotz said the grower did everything he could to troubleshoot on his own. They had tried changing the simple things like fuel filters, wondering if it was slowing it down a little bit uh, that didn't do it. A strange occurrence that caused Rots to remotely connect in to the machine. Looked at the machine utilization and everything looked good. I mean, the engine loads were about the same. Um, so we dug in a little deeper and that's when we found that the, the time for differential lock being engaged was different between the two. Remotely connecting in created a quick fix. And then when we engaged it, the traction increased and allowed it to pull that implement efficiently and get more done per hour back to where the other one was. Even leaving Clayne amazed. I wish I would have figured it out. <laughs> Before you checked all the filters <laughs> yeah. and, and everything? Yes. On that fall day, Clayne says it saved him time and money, able to fire on all cylinders to finish the race of harvest that year. Welcome back to Tractor Tales, folks. This week, we're off to the Tar Heel State to learn about a classic John Deere A. This tractor began its working days in Indiana, but now lives a life of parading and showboating out on the East Coast. Come on. I've got a 1952 John Deere A that was restored by a fellow by the name of Chris Bolin in uh, Salem, Indiana. I bought it with the specific purpose of just enjoying it in the parades and in the show for the tractor club and just something to play with as a toy. I didn't seek the particular model. I wanted a, I wanted a two-cylinder John Deere, Pop and John, but uh, I happened to see this, this particular uh, tractor uh, advertised in Green Magazine for sale and uh, called the guy, talked to him, got interested in it, and, uh, and it went from there. I've done a few cosmetic things, uh, I've, uh, just, just some things I wanted to do, change an electrical system a little bit, and uh, went from a generator to an alternator, because working around the show, generator didn't hold up as well as the alternator does, so uh, that makes it not completely original, but, uh, but it, works, it works extremely well. When I bought it, he had been using it for, uh, for bush hogging, and he said, now if you put a bush hog behind this tractor, I said, oh, stop right there. I said, this tractor has seen its last bush hog days. It's going to play from now on. I said, this tractor has worked for, uh, for over 50 years. I said, it's time for it to retire. It's going to retire and play. This season, while work for you may have changed, our season is underway. American agriculture farms on for our family and yours.
All right, folks, time for our feature item on the show today. And tell you what, I'm salivating looking at this baby. <laughs> I know, isn't that neat? Tell us about the 6030. Well, we bought it from a guy in Ohio. He passed last year. But, you know, in collecting, which I've kind of been collecting since I was in high school, but, you know, we used to always say that in a collection you want to have a spoke flywheel D, and then it kind of got to be a Waterloo boy, and there's, there's certain things that's just iconic to me. I think the 6030 in the muscle tractor, you know, you got to have a 4020. Everybody's got to have a 4020, but that 6030 is, you know, they was big, they was beefy, they had the long, big engine. And of course, I like duels and so on. You so look forth. pretty good sitting up there. Oh yeah, baby. Now, now you bought the 6030. This one you bought restored. This is just the way we bought it. The guy, I mean, he went through the engine, he went through the transmission, the clutch. Uh, you know, he put new Firestone deep tread tires on it, and it just on and on and on. And so this man, is really, is really a buying opportunity. Someone's already done all the work, and it's just oh. ready to go. Yeah, you know, earlier we talked about originality. And if you can find original, you know, you've got to try to buy that. But when you start going into these, if you can find them done right, it's a lot better buy to buy them done right because, especially if you take it into, say, a, a franchise dealer shop at $100 an hour, you know, you very easily could come out with a sixty dollars or $70,000 repair bill right. on this thing to make it like this. So, you know, everybody's got their own likes, but boy, if you can find them done and done right, that's then you set your satchel down by it. But. What, what do you remember how this, these things have evolved? Well, you know, the 50, 20, and the 10, was, they was big, but I think as we started getting into this era is when tractors started to grow and we started looking at more power. You know, the 4320 come a turboed unit. We, we run a new 4320 on the farm, and, you know, it was just so much more than a 4020, and, but it was still nimble. These things still get around good, but you know they just a lot of torque and a lot of power. Kind of amazing to look at them and think, you know, this this was the monster of of the day at the time. Yeah. 42, 42. I sold it. Forty-one thousand five hundred dollars going to Ohio. Two of the interesting hot spots in the used farm equipment lately, folks: cultivators and small no-till drills. Now, if we talk cultivators. Here's a picture of a Case IH 183 16 row 30 inch cultivator. Now this sold on an online farm auction in Laramore, North Dakota, sold by the Steffes Group. This was on April uh, 7th, 2020. Went for 6,400 bucks. Now that is the highest auction price I've seen on a 183 cultivator in 14 years. In fact, the second highest in just over 20 years. Now another cultivator early this year that drew a lot of attention was this John Deere 856 12 row 30 inch that sold on a farm auction January 3rd, 2020 in Northwest Iowa. Went for $15,750. Now that is the third highest auction price in 20 years on an 856 and is the highest uh, auction price on a 12 row 856. Now if I go back the last five months, uh, the highest auction price I've seen on a cultivator was this really sharp Buffalo 6600 high residue 16 row 30 inch cultivator that brought 27.5 and that was on a December 18th 2019 BigIron.com online auction uh, came out of Nebraska. Now interesting note here our friends at Big Iron the last five months four of the five highest cultivators sold at auction were on BigIron.com. Now another hot spot again are the small uh, no-till drills so let's take the example of a Great Plains 1006 NT 10 foot no-till drill. Well, how interesting that in the month of March, four of the six highest I've ever seen sold, again, all came in March of 2020. And the king of the hill was this record setter, this 2015 model, like new condition, that sold March 2nd on a farm auction in West Central Missouri, went for $31,000. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed our show today here from New Paris, Indiana. My good friend Dennis Polk is pretty estate collector auction. I tell you what, that John Deere 6030, Coming into the sale, I'd only ever seen four go over 40,000. Clock's in at 41.5, pretty good stuff. Tune in next week. We'll be back here with some more cool machinery to highlight for you. Machinery Pete thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com.